In this video, we're going to be talking extreme weather, extreme events, and what's up with all of these asteroids. Let's get into it. Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls, and this is the look at the next week of January 10th, 2022, but actually these videos are in fact timeless. So whenever you are finding this, this is the time to listen. So first and foremost, thank you all for your well wishes. I wasn't feeling so hot, I'm feeling much better now. Still on the mend, but <laughs> I can function and I'll take that. I mean, that's, that's better than what it was. So as we get into this message for this week, there is this huge, um, it, it's like a big siren going off, okay? Now where I was raised in Northern Ohio, and I was just talking to a friend about this, we had these tornado sirens. And they were this horrendous noise that would go off when there was a tornado in the area. It has this kind of feel about it where we are having to wake up to these changes and we can't get into this mode of uh, it, it's this group's fault or that group's fault, but the human mind is going to try to put all kinds of meaning to it. And really what this is, it's about magnetism and energetic flow from this perspective, right? From the spiritual perspective and the messages that we're getting through uh, angelic forces, right? So for the past few days, actually, I was kind of down for the count, but uh, the past few days, it, it's been this huge thing, like, you know, tell people about the extreme weather, tell people about what's happening on the earth. You know, the earth is going to be cracking and splitting open. Tsunamis, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or so, maybe two years, we have a whole new category of hurricane might be classified, you know, as a higher number. So we are going to be in danger of falling into this mode of, oh my gosh, victimhood, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. What's going on in the world, you know, or, you know, getting into hero syndrome. We see that a lot where people are standing up and by diminishing one group of people, they claim to be the hero of their group of people. So all this is doing is creating more division. Now we do need to talk about angelic numbers. I'll make a whole other video about the angel number frequency, not necessarily numerology, but the angel number frequency of 2022. Okay, so we'll get into that in a separate video, but we are in a time where we are being asked to balance and to consider others, right? So it's not just so much about the self, which was the energy of 2021 resetting and having a fresh start as an individual okay whether that was immense healing that you went through or you know finding your patterns finding what triggers you uh reevaluating what makes you happy you know who do i want to be in a relationship with uh for some of you there's this message here of uh, evaluating whether a family having your own family was the right thing for you maybe there was a whole lot of pressure that you've put on yourselves to have a family. It's that sort of thing. Just reevaluating what you as a singular person would need to be happy. That was the energy of 2021. I, for example, that is when I really started going in depth in my healing and began looking at moments in my life, traits, you know, patterns, all of that, that I had become numb to and was very resistant to acknowledge, right? So, and I'm still in that process. But as we come into this year, and we're talking about more upheaval. Now, I don't know that it'll be disease or illness. I mean, don't let your guard down with that, but it, it's sort of our focus goes to the tsunami that's coming over the coast, or it you know goes towards this earthquake that just split the earth open. If any of you are going to be shopping for homes, please listen to me very carefully. Have the soil tested. I am not kidding, okay? There's this idea here of uh, sinkholes and, you know, again, this whole idea of the ground sort of opening up and things <laughs> falling into it. So make sure you're having the soil tested. And if you haven't done it yet, this is the time to develop your intuition. And we'll get into that here in just a moment about kind of how intuition is starting to function. It's just not emanating from here anymore. It's this energy coming through our whole being. Okay, but we'll come back to that because I wanna get through these. Oop, gotta watch my hair around that microphone. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you know, we really wanna focus on where, if anybody would be in danger. You know, obviously 
the west coast of the United States. Alaska is factoring in here. I will say that I see things falling. So this could be ice falling. Uh, this can be, because it feels, again, it might be an earthquake. I am coming back to that because it feels like there's some sort of rumbling and things start falling into water. Okay, so we were definitely watching that at the end of 2021 with volcanoes erupting, you know, La Palma, you know, is that gonna fall into the ocean? What will that do? That sort of thing. So that's gonna amp up. I can't emphasize enough. This is why I do this kind of content with this sort of esoteric art. It's about the human emotions and how we are responding because when we respond a certain way, our frequency gets thrown off, your psychology gets thrown off, and now you're acting out in a physical way that is not helpful. Again, people are gonna martyr and people are going to try to pretend to be heroes. Um, people are gonna step out in front of others and say, I knew this was gonna come, and they try to act like, you know, they're gonna be the next profound leader uh, of some sort. It has this interesting feel here of don't allow yourself, one, to go into panic and victimhood. Don't do that, all right? Uh, victimhood would be, why is Michelle scaring us right now? Why is Michelle saying all of this? Why is Michelle, because I'm not here to tell you what you wanna hear. And there is a message here to move past that now, right? That is almost that human that never grows up can never accept that things happen in this world. And the only way that you can come through is by knowing yourself, knowing how you function, knowing what your triggers are and working on that, healing that, so that when there are disasters going on, you know, we're not gonna be able to, you know, make it so that nothing ever happens and life is just sunshine and rainbows, but we can handle it, we can be there for one another. So again, there's this idea here of um, there was sort of like a test run with all the illness that was going around. Instead of it bringing us together, it tore us apart. People started to become even more selfish and self-centered and that's a huge thing that's gonna be cracking open. So just as a, an aside, we're gonna continue that energy of anybody who's in that non-empathy mode where they only care about themselves or if they are broken in some way from like a personality standpoint, where they're ruthless, they don't care. We're not gonna honor that so much anymore. And we're gonna start seeing a lot of people getting exposed. We're already seeing that. We're seeing people, you know, literally thinking they've done nothing wrong because maybe they're lacking in morals and they don't understand that you can't intimidate somebody like that or you can't interfere with a free will choice. And you know, this goes into the spiritual community too as well, guys. When you interfere with someone that is the bad kind of magic, okay? And you can have everybody out there defending their point, putting a little bow on it, doing their whole thing. At the end of the day, you're not following the rules of the universe and it's gonna come back to you. That's all there is to it. And the more you try to shoot an energy out at somebody, the more it's gonna ricochet and come back and hit you. So this whole thing is understanding and waking up to what have we been contributing energetically? What is our magnetic field? And how are we, uh, how is that magnetic field bouncing off of other individual fields? And how is that collective now affecting the earth? It's our collective anger. It is our collective hurt. It's our collective delusion. And not wanting, just having our priorities pretty messed up, right? We're in a society where money is everything, power is everything. Um, beauty is everything, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I think there's gonna be a turnabout for some people. You know, th some people are gonna have a harder time with this than others, obviously, uh, who really have been trained to think that, you know, money and power and all that, that is what you need to put your focus on. But guess what? Everyone is equal when there's an earthquake and the ground splits. Everyone's human. Everyone could be in danger of losing their life in that moment, right? So it, it it's an equalizer here. So again, check out that video that I'm gonna be bringing out here about the energy of 2022. It's very important, okay? And revisit it throughout the year to refresh your memory, all right? So that is essentially what's going on here. There are these, and I even said events. We have these asteroids that are <laughs> exploding over the earth. 
Uh, we're going to see more of that. So there's a reason why there's a lot of focus on that and, and making sure that, um, you know, trying to avert a disaster, basically. So we're going to be seeing that's that magnetism. What is drawing this, you know, debris or whatever you want to see this towards the earth? It is what we are emanating from a spiritual standpoint. Of course, there's a scientific standpoint. I'm not here to speak on that. Let the scientists take care of that part. But from a spiritual standpoint, this is a time where we are changing and shifting our priorities. We are admitting hard truths to ourselves. We are striving for balance and realizing that, you know, it isn't just about what I want, but I know that my choices are affecting someone else. It's about partnership. It's about coming together. And I just got a message. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I was really into that. And now we're getting another message. Something about partnership in a romantic way too. So this might be, um, also I can't breathe very well. Nothing terrible guys. It happens to me every winter. I get a sinus infection or a cold or something. It's fine, but it's getting kind of hard to kick it. So anyway, there's this idea here of, people choosing healthier partnerships in a romantic way. So that's kind of an interesting message and not out of desperation, not out of woe is me. Uh, and again, this idea of creating families and that sort of thing. So there's this idea here of when we're talking about love and family and all of that part of life, we're taking the pressure off of that and saying, no, if it's not, for some of you, you say, no, if it's not happening naturally, it's not going to happen. Or some of you might say, well, no, I'm not going to force myself to be in a partnership. I don't care that I'm 60 years old and never been married. That's okay, right? So there's this other thing that's going on, and it does play into everything else that's happening here. It's an energy that we're throwing into the collective, okay? And that is definitely affecting, you know, not just how we all present as a humanity, but it's also affecting the earth, all right? So everything is being sort of projected back to us and we are magnetizing things to us that we don't want, whether it's in your personal life or as a collective, all right? So the energies that we need to be more mindful of is, there's this message here of stop being selfish. Stop being selfish. Now I'm gonna pull some cards here. I like to do that because it um, you know, pulls things into the 3D reality and makes it a little more practical. But if you look at what kinds of readings out there are the most popular, they're the shallow ones. They're the dark ones sometimes. I, it, it's fascinating to me that, you know, it, they're the neat, what I would call needy readings, right? <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to feed you this little bit, come back tomorrow and I'll feed you a little bit more, right? Um, and, and it's kind of like stringing someone along so that they almost become codependent with the reader. And so maybe, and it's very disempowering. So maybe you feel like you can't make a move in your life until you consult with your particular reader, right? You see what I'm saying? So that is something coming up. I'm telling you, that's the old way. <laughs> that is the old way. And it, it, you'll discover, if you're somebody who's in that kind of dynamic, you will discover that you've been taken for a ride. You will discover that you have been taught to be powerless so that someone could have power over you. You will realize that you're no better for everything that you, all the advice that you took, right? And it doesn't have to just be from a reader. It could be the advice you took from somebody with your career. I can't tell you how often somebody comes and says, well, you need to do, if you want your channel to be more successful and be bigger and you wanna make more ad revenue off of it, I mean, you have to lower that camera down. You need to dress this way. You need to whatever, whatever, do these more shallow readings. I'm sorry, I wanna be fair. All love and respect to people who do that kind of stuff. Wake up, okay, I can't tell you anymore. Something's gonna come along and knock you if you don't, if you're not careful. And especially the readers who will dive into other people's souls without their permission. You go against their free will. It's time, it's time. That beast is getting bigger, it's amplifying, and it's right behind you, okay? So just be careful, we need to be uh, more in our integrity and more mindful of the energy that we are putting out there. So we are not magnetizing disaster to us. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I said it just like that. You know, people will say, oh my gosh, how can you say 
and that if something happens on this one island, that it was the people of the island that caused it. No, those are the people that had to suffer the effects because of all of us. That's what we're getting at here. And that is the awareness that needs to come up. All right. Now we're talking about intuition and how it's coming out of just sort of the third eye area and coming down into the cells. I was just meditating and, um, you know, I got into that space. And usually this is where I always uh, rely very heavily on my clear sentience, my feeling and my clear audience, the hearing part of it. And nothing was happening. I was just like in a, a room by myself. Okay. And just <laughs> what's going on here. And I did feel as I was coming out of meditation and I went through my practice, uh, that what I needed to know would come to me. What I needed to know would just come to me. And so now I'm not so much, at least right now, not getting the messages during meditation, but rather, and I've been saying this for years too, you know, you might get a message while you're just doing the dishes, but this is a little bit different. It's um, more after I come out, like it, it's like every bit of my being is now talking to me. It's not just this one center. So be mindful of that. Don't push yourself too hard. If you want, you need to be meditating. That's like brushing your teeth. You got to do that, right? But even if you don't get your messages during meditation, it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean that, you know, you don't understand or whatever. It's going to be coming through your knowingness, through your entire being. Okay. So a lot more we could say on that. I'm going to be creating lots more content. I'm going to be getting up the Archangel Ariel uh, meditation challenge for Gumroad. Those take a, those don't take a long time to film necessarily. <laughs> they take a long time to edit and to get together. So I will be working on that. I don't know how I'm going to feel after I get done filming. Sometimes I can get a little bit done and then I have to sit for a second, but I'll get that out definitely. And make sure that you are subscribed. That way you get notification when that comes up. There will be lots more content coming out about astral projection, Akashic records, you know, um, how do you know if you're talking to your angel or something else, you know, all the, that kind of content will be coming. So please make sure that you are subscribed. That way you do get the notification there. And if you do like this content and you want it to be seen by others, all you have to do is like the video and that shows the algorithm that the video is what people want and other people can see it. All right. So we are going to go ahead and pull some cards again. I think that's what people are used to. We'll see as time goes on if we still use cards, but let's just get on to it. Even as I'm pulling out these cards, I keep hearing intention, 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 because again, the ego consciousness, people are very argumentative and uh, want to put everything in its place. And sometimes if they are confounded by uh, information or if they feel like it's dichotomous in some way, they want to try to suss it out and figure out and be like, well, you know, you're a, being a hypocrite because of X, Y, and Z. Everything comes down to intention. That's why you can have a reader who might be doing shallow readings, but they're doing it with such um, good intention, beauty, harmony, grace, and knowledge. They can pull it off. And then you have other people who are playing on people's fears and disempowering them. And quite frankly, giving the rest of us a bad name and making us look like we are woo woo or whatever. <laughs> right? And it does kind of dampen uh, the integrity of the art, right? Whatever your form of art is. Here we go. Five of Michael, clean it up clean it up. The situation doesn't serve you. Release your attachment to the outcome. That is huge. And we're going to talk more about that in the video about 2022 and people's expectations. And um, again, I don't want to get into it too much here, but consider taking a more uplifting approach. Now, immediately the five of Michael is let the fight go. Remember what I was saying from the top of, oops, that doesn't help anything if there's a glare on it. <laughs> Sorry. But right from the top of the reading, I was saying that people either victimize themselves, they martyr themselves, or they come out and try to be the hero. And next thing you know, you can't set a boundary because now you're going to be called all sorts of names and no one takes you seriously. And there could be something serious going on, but because someone felt the need to start a movement that ended up being toxic and setting us back quite a bit, um, you know, we're no better for it. And that same, it, it always comes down to energy. That same kind of intention and energy is being put out into the collective. And so this event, whatever that was, it was supposed to spark us to love more and to be more in partnership, be more harmonious and balanced, just split us apart even more and made things worse. I can't, I was starting to go down the road before of where the earthquakes are. Japan, obviously, 
that's not new to you, you get earthquakes, please, please, please watch the tsunamis, all right? Um, this, there's also a message here that they're bringing through. Take everything seriously. The boulder, well, actually the fire that, the Marshall fire that happened in Louisville and Superior in, in Boulder, I think that's Boulder County. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think, I think that's what it is. But I, I, I live in Colorado Springs, so I'm about three hours away, but I was getting alerts saying, if you're in the area, go north, go east, just get the heck out of here because there's no time. There's just no time. Now, I live in an area where I'm aware of the fire danger. I tell everybody I have a firebox. I have like the most important stuff in there. I have things ready to go if need be. And I'm never one to let my car sit in the garage with less than a quarter of a tank of gas. Actually, I don't let it get <laughs> very low at all because you always need to have your car ready to go. Do I do it with paranoia? No. Do I do it with fear and panic and all that? No. But there's this awareness that this is a potential. And the earth and the way it's shifting and moving and evolving, you have to be ready, okay? And that's what I wanna bring to all of you. Now, we are going to, how do I wanna put this? We need to be more aware of people's brain wiring. That's been going on for a while, where we start looking at, okay, don't be an enabler, don't make excuses for bad behavior, because people are getting sucked in by people who do not hold any more empathy, and they're falling for it, right? And they think that these people are great people, or, you know, oh, they're just wounded. Yeah, well, a lot of people are wounded, but you could choose to harm others because you were wounded, or you could choose to heal yourself and, you know, help pull other people out of that hurt. Does that make sense? So we don't need to sit here and feel sorry for people who are being cruel to others. We don't need, <laughs> you think that sounds weird, people do it all the time. It's the norm, okay? People are constantly making excuses for bad behavior. We're gonna start seeing a lot of that get messy as well. And people twisting narratives and trying to make things seem one way when they're another. Um, that probably will spark some paranoia for some people gonna be messy okay it's gonna be messy but the whole point of this time is to start implementing everything that you have already learned okay let's see here and don't forget at least for now I'm still breaking these down into dailies as well every year I reevaluate what's working what's not working with the channel what can I do more of uh, I'd like to go down the road of more spiritual teaching uh, please comment down below if you'd like to see more of that. All right, so we have <laughs> we have change your life. Here you go. And the number is 16, which reduces to seven. And we had five of Michael, which is all about change and shifting. And here is seven. So the angels and archangels are trying to get us to not fall for the darkness, but to lift up. Okay, lift up, pull up, pull up, pull up. It doesn't have to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be terrible. And this is Archangel Shamuel. Now, I will be doing a course on Shamuel as well, a meditation challenge for Shamuel. Uh, Shamuel is all about living your highest potential, self-love, romantic partnership as well. Uh, it says, a, a sudden revelation that offers freedom. Break free of procrastination. Embrace the opportunities that change brings. So again, this whole big message about change. And it says, break free of procrastination. Well, what is the, the procrastination? Being in denial wanting everything to go back to quote unquote normal because we're so resistant to change. The past couple of years have been problematic and not for the reasons you think. It was problematic because of how we were treating one another, being the boss of one another, making sure that we hoard and take so much for ourselves more than we need so that our needs are ever covered even if it means someone else doesn't have something to keep their home clean or food or whatever, okay? I, the reason why I keep hesitating about this, I feel like this is gonna come slam us. I really do, I, it's coming down. It's coming down and it's going to get to the place of, okay, you have to work together. You better figure it out. You better not let get pol uh, politics get in the way. You better not let you know, I believe this and that and that and this and this and this, and you better believe the way I do or you're evil, but you better knock it off. There's no room for that. We need you to be focused, okay? And not on fighting, 
but on changing, okay? This big message of change. All right. Six of Gabriel, congratulations. You've done a wonderful job. Time to move on to the next project, awards, scholarships, or promotions. So this is indicating we can come through this. We can, it's not too late. That's what this card feels like. It's not too late for us to make these changes and to take these changes seriously. Now, this could be a win. Unfortunately, a lot of people see that as a surface level selfish thing, a win for me, you know, due to a loss for someone else. Um, I'm telling you that whole, those people are gonna get left behind. I don't know how else to put it. They're gonna get left behind. No one's gonna feed them anymore, like feed them any energy. Nobody's gonna take them seriously anymore. Ugh, yeah. Ten of Gabriel, ask your angels for helpful people to lighten your load, working too many hours, trying too hard to please others. So I'll offer what's on these cards. Again, these are pretty outdated cards, but I use them because they still have a very good energy. And don't forget, I am the reader. So <laughs> it really is uh, to have some words, some energy, and some images and colors and things like that. So the Ten of Gabriel is being burdened. So you might come into this week feeling like, I can't hear one more thing. I am overwhelmed. I am afraid of the future. I am afraid of what I'm discovering about myself. I feel like I have too many things to worry about. And then what ends up happening, we end up taking that out on other people, right? And that's going against what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be collaborating. We're supposed to be working with one another, okay? Not, oops, almost dropped everything. <laughs> Not enabling. Not enabling, okay? How about, well, in the spiritual community, you'll hear people say, well, that person who's yelling, they need a lot of love. I don't argue that, but you become an enabler when you're making excuses for that person and someone who really was harmed by that person. You know, you're, you're kind of not supporting them, but you're looking for an explanation for why this person, you see what I'm saying? You're, you're making excuses for the perpetrator and not <laughs> giving um, the other person any support. And what's more, you're reinforcing to the person who just acted out that way that they can do it again. When we don't play into that, when we start standing back and saying no, and everything, when I say this, everything that we're having to understand and starting to change, it cannot be from a self-righteous place. And that is, you know, the trouble, right? I think every, any one of us at any time can get self-righteous or people will throw that term on you. Me just coming out and talking about this stuff people will say, she's a little preachy and self-righteous for me. That's their egos being bruised. <laughs> like, I'm never sitting here like preaching it. Well, I do preach at your face sometimes, but you know, it's again, intention is everything. What I do here is very different than what some other people out there are trying to pull. And usually the people who make comments like that, they're the ones who are um, pulling that stuff, <laughs> right? And they're projecting basically. All right, so we have red. Free yourself from pain, the number is two. 2022. There you go. All about balance, harmony, the root chakra, what makes us feel safe? Where do we feel at home? You know, and earth is our home. What are we going to do to help that? Now, I know, again, people love to get all self-righteous and say, well, I recycle. I <laughs> take care of the animals. I think, you know, if everybody just became vegan, the world would be a better place. That is not what we're talking about here. Okay. We are talking about energy. And if you are even a vegan that goes out there judging everybody, you're putting a bad energy into the collective. Thanks for nothing. I'm glad you're saving the little animals, but you got this other thing you got to work on. Okay, you're messy. <laughs> so, so we got to be aware of that. No matter what your thing is, we all have to work on this in this coming year because that number for change, ooh, that's coming next year. It's getting used to a new norm, okay? and um, figuring out the solutions and figuring out how to lay new foundations in place. But this is the year, sort of is, is the year to catch our breath, although a lot of people won't feel like we're catching our breath. But again, we're being asked to, no matter what situation you're in, to stay focused, to handle it, to don't go into victimhood or martyr, martyrdom or you know trying to be the hero but really being collaborative, honoring others as you honor yourself. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.